Hand tracking makes VR more accessible to a whole new range of audiences. And as it evolves, and I don't think that future is too far away. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a big day for VR News. Tell us who you are and your studio and what you're announcing. Sure. And thanks for having me. And hi, everyone watching. Uh, I'm Rob Thorsen. I am the CEO of Alten. Uh, and today we are um, fully re revealing our hand tracking update for Waltz of the Wizard. Awesome. And that is hand tracking throughout the entire game. Is that correct? Can you explain That's... how hard it was to achieve that? <laughs> That's correct. Um, we actually, we, we weren't completely sure that we'd be able to like do it in, in a high enough quality level, uh, like the full game, fully playable. Uh, but actually with the advances that Oculus is hand tracking made over the past few months, uh, there was a point where we sort of just saw like, maybe we can do a full integration, like make everything work. And of course, Waltz is fully interactive. You can interact with everything in the experience. And so we've been really happy to see that we've managed to include most of the elements and, and, uh, and yeah, you can play everything that Waltz has to offer. You're pretty reliant on gesture recognition. Can you walk me through some of the gestures that you're using in the app and how reliable are they on the current Quest hardware? Yeah. Um, so most of the key gestures are involved with um, with magic um, and the act of like moving around the environment with artificial locomotion. Um, we use our our new uh, new generation of telepath, our locomotion system, um, where you can actually draw a path to where you want to go. So telepath is designed to be hands free and to be uh, really intuitive to use and to sort of bridge the gap between conventional thumbstick lo locomotion and teleporting. We want to enable you to just fully focus on your physical movement. That's sort of a key fundamental design philosophy for telepath. We want you to just be able to focus on physically moving even if you're artificially locomo locomoting around. So we want to sort of blend your physical movement and artificial movement in ways that feel more natural and get artificial locomotion out of your way. So the way that it works is you make sort of like this uh, finger gun gestures with your palm up and you just quickly draw a path on the ground. And you can do this really fast. And with the new features we just announced, uh, Arc Roll, you can do it even faster. In just a fraction of a second, you can draw a complicated path, takes turns. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's sort of the key gesture for telepath. It feels sort of like rolling a bowling ball or, or a come here gesture when you use it. And once you get the hang of it, you're really it's really easy to do and it helps you move along this path and what we do we analyze your physical presence and behavior so if you draw a path past some objects or an ammo crate or something you can actually just while you're moving artificially take a physical step and pick something up and telepath will adapt to that behavior so it'll slow down to help you accomplish that so that sort of buttonless experience where you can just you, you know that the system will help you do physical things. That enhances your sense of, sense of presence and being there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so and, and it, it'll, yeah. it'll slow down a little bit when you need to do the reaching, and then you can also do arm swinger, right, to speed up a little bit? That's right. So, um, yeah, so it's a blend of things, and we think we can keep the system growing, and, and like we have plans to add more advanced presence control features to sort of just make the artificial system bend to your will so that it feels as natural as possible. You, how long of the process of development was hand tracking implementation for you, and how near the end of that process did it become clear that you were going to be able to get the full game in there. Um, so it, it's sort of hard to tell, say because we've been sort of chipping away at it for a few months. And you know, um, but 
Uh, we've been working on it for a few months, and of course we were uh, Valve uh, Index launch title, so we had some of the hand tracking features in there already, but um, the index has sort of limited tracking, so we weren't able to do but a like, m tiny portion of what we wanted to. Uh, but with Quest, that's different. They, it has a fully articulated hand model, and, and you can do more. We tested a bunch of different features, and not all of them are making it into this initial version. But we'll see. If things go well, we'll probably expand them even further. Um, it's, a f it's a free update for the game, right? So if you own Waltz of the Wizard or Quest already, you'll just get this feature, right? That's right. It's uh, completely free. Um, and one of the things I want to understand is the sort of long journey to get here. So you you were very early on with Waltz of the Wizard on team, and uh, you had some you had dev kits before that, right? Can you explain to me sort of how you ended up arriving at hand tracking and how you think it differs from what's come before it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we've had an interest in hand tracking for a really long time. Like we started Alden in 2013. Oculus was just exiting its Kickstarter. And we immediately started working with this presence analysis techniques and, you know, integrating your your physical presence into the experiences. And even our first commercial product, Asunder, uh, back in 2013, was designed to be... Uh, usable and have features for hand tracking and that was back when like game pads were just a prevalent form of input there were no like solid and reliable solutions like um, Al's room scale so uh, we've been thinking about this for a while and it's sort of a mission for us to make uh, you and your physical presence as much a part of the experience as, as possible um, yeah we uh, Valve and HTC gave us a really early kit of um, of the HTC Vive, and at that time, like it was ninety eight percent gamepad, forward facing, seated experiences, and we sort of, um, in one part, our efforts with Waltz initially were sort of noble. We wanted to show people what. Um, what room scale VR was capable of and what you could do with motion controllers and why that was the future. Um, and uh, at the, like at the time people were calling it gimmicks and you know, room scale will never sell. People don't have the space, but of course things turn out differently. It's sort of stupid to say this today even because <laughs> uh, it's just shown it so well how tightly integrated that is with VR. And we think that's mm -hmm. the same with hand tracking. Um, but yeah, Waltz was like a um, sampler dish of things that make VR unique or room scale VR where you're physically there and can take steps in a full 360 degree tracked environment. Um, and we think um, this type of optical hand tracking or, or controllerless hand tracking is a direct continuation of that. It's helping us achieve a greater part of what we want to do with VR. Um, this might be a tricky yeah. question to ask, but what would be your preferred way to play now going forward? Do you prefer controllers or do you prefer hand tracking? Uh, we think controllers are still the solution you would want for prolonged sessions. But that being said, we've been amazed with the advances that hand tracking has made in, in recent months, even just running on quests hardware which which is not specialized for hand tracking where they've done an amazing job with it and we think like uh, it's my opinion at this point a lot of consumers are overestimating hand tracking i mean it is flawed it only works in certain lighting conditions and um but that being said like having developed for it for a while and use it and, and sort of gotten the hang of getting around the limit current limitations we were actually really happy with how playable it is using hand tracking, as long as you design around the flaws and limitations. Like mm -hmm. we had to make minor adjustments to a lot of things in Waltz to get it to feel right. But I think that's what we're going to see, like a lot of consumers overestimating it, but a lot of experts underestimating it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think so, that's, yeah. that's a, that's a fanta fantastic way to put it. And it's so tricky because 
I just want to sort of make sure that the people out there understand why now uh, and, and why does it seem like it's on a path to robustness, even if it's not 100% correct on yeah. the hardware today. So, of course, uh, like a major difference now and in the past is that it's um, fully integrated into the system. I mean, it's it's still an optional feature, but Facebook is doing is or Facebook and Oculus are are integrating it to a really tight degree. And that makes a, a big difference um, for someone like us who's developing for it. Um, and I also think Facebook has the right idea about where to go from here in terms of natural input. I think hand tracking makes VR more accessible to a whole new range of audiences. And as it evolves, and I don't think that future is too far away, as it evolves, it's going to uh, bring more people into virtual reality and makes the experience feel more natural. So you can just focus on being there instead of focus on learning how to press buttons or, or how, to, how to exist, basically. That's what we're talking about teaching people when we hand them controllers. It's sort of like, this is how you exist in this world. We love taking people into our office now and just showing them hand tracking and not have to explain anything except one gesture about how you move around. Um, and uh, yeah, um, that's sort of um, the short version, but, but yeah, Facebook has done such a great job in, in enhancing reliability. And I think they're going to continue on that path. And just judging from what they've been able to do over the past few months, it's it's really promising. And we think this is a point where we might look back in a few years and point at, yeah, that's sort of where today's modern controllers began. But perhaps mm. we'll we'll see. But that's that's sort of our sense at this point. Interesting. I, I that's such a interesting way of saying that. And one of the things you said was what well, deep integration. Uh, in the system, so like uh, you can, they've been adding it piece by piece over the year, over the months, uh, where you can sort of uh, access the menus and turn on different features, and then access different apps. And they've got that pinch gesture, which lets you get to the menu in a very specific way. And uh, you know, those things are sort of the on ramp to getting into the system. But I love the other part of your explanation where you explained. Uh, sort of bringing people in and just teaching them the one gesture because you're kind of describing there the friction that has been so limiting for so long in VR is I can think of going back to maybe 2014 and maybe early 2015 and putting a Gear VR Innovator Edition on <laughs> somebody and handing them a traditional gamepad and I remember someone just basically almost throwing the gamepad back at me because they recognized <laughs> it as a traditional game controller and it had a dozen buttons on it. And they never, and this, this is a person who just never played games. And they were just like, nope, I will never touch that. I'm, I refuse to learn that. But I guess uh, all this leads to me my final question for today. And it's, I want to understand what the next year looks like for you what what are you focusing on and when is it going to get here yeah so we recently announced that we'll be expanding waltz even further and to a degree that we've never done to date so we're working on some uh, new expansions that will bring gameplay and the world itself to a new level in terms of simulation. And that's that, like a key of what we're doing is to create believable reality experiences where it actually feels like a real world and things are designed to enhance that, your sense of that. Um, but yeah, we'll be bringing the magic and everything you've come to uh, uh, know and enjoy in Waltz to a new level. Uh, we'll probably start teasing that pretty soon so we're excited about that and i think um we'll make things pretty clear in the next um few weeks and months let me uh i i lied again i have i have one more question <laughs> um hey dlc free dlc both and um, how big of a moment like how many more people do you think are just going to come to your app in particular once they know that 
hand tracking is there. Do you think you're going to have a, a big amount of new sales? Um, yeah, there are two things that we are hoping to get from this. Like on one part, there's a, a big part of consumers that are curious about this and want to see what it's like. So we definitely expect um, a pretty big group of people um, coming into Waltz and seeing it for the first time. The other thing we'd like to do is just to give other developers a chance to evaluate, like see this working in a full experience and sort of evaluate by themselves what uh, what, you, what you can and can't do at this point. Um, yeah, we're hoping to make this, to like keep making Waltz the great introductory experience to VR um, in uh, like the immediate future and to keep expanding it into something more. So we're hoping that the, like if anyone's watching who's going to be playing Waltz with hand tracking, we'll, we'd love to get your feedback. We want to keep improving. Not all of the things in there are perfect yet and we're also listening to people when it comes to our upcoming expansions and what you want to do and what you want to see. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and uh, good luck with the update and everyone out there, let us know what you think of the hand tracking. There's things like telepath and getting around room scales. That's not many times you get to be first with something like that. And so I'm curious, I'm sure you're going to be taking it all in and, and trying to figure out how to do things better in the future. Definitely. Thank you so We're much really for joining excited. us. And, Congrats on yeah, that big thanks launch. For, <laughs> thanks for having me.